Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about how to communicate between an Allen Bradley PanelView 800 and a Compact Logix or Control Logix PLC. We have an HMI series where we've been going through how to build out screens, but several of you have asked for clarification on the steps to make it communicate with a Compact Logix instead of the Micro 820 that we've been using in it. In this video, we're going to be using our Compact Logix PLC trainer. This is the L24 version of it. And I'll put a link in the description to the HMI series where we've been working with this panel view program in Connected Components Workbench. But here's the program. Actually, it's a little bit modified one that I uploaded. So just to start with, I'm going to clear out those two. So this looks very similar to what we had in the Trends HMI video but I've removed all the top part because we're getting ready to do some servo videos with this one. And what we want to do is on the left pane, double click on our PV800. And right now, since I uploaded this from our Micro 800 example, it shows the controller type of a Micro 800 and the address is 192.168.1.14. Now I've already configured the Compact Logics for the exact same IP address. To switch to the Compact Logix, we're going to go to Protocol and we're going to select Allen Bradley Compact Logix as opposed to Allen Bradley CIP. And we're going to get a warning that it's going to clear out some of our configuration. And most notably, that clears out our IP address. Now here's where some of you are going wrong, is you're wanting to type 192.168.1.14 and call it good. But the compact logics and control logics require that you specify, let's call it a deeper path. And it mainly has to do with the control logics. And we went through that in an earlier video where we were talking about communications configuration, but mainly we need to add comma one comma zero to it. And what that says is, all right, 192.168.114, that gets us to the ethernet port. One gets us to the back plane of our PLC. And then zero tells it to go out the first slot. Now, it's a little confusing on the Compact Logics because it doesn't really have that chassis feel. But if we were working with a control Logics, then there's nothing that says your processor has to be in slot zero. It can be in slot two, it can be in slot 13, whatever. You can have multiple processors in one chassis. And so that's what it comes from. And the control logics and compact logics are really built very similar. They use the same Studio 5000 software and everything. So you still have to put that additional path in to make our communications work with the compact logics. So now let's go ahead and add a few tags just so we can see that this works. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna delete the tags that are in this one. And then I'm gonna add and in this case, I'm gonna add rotary position, and that's gonna be a real, and our address is gonna be rotary position, and that's gonna be coming from the PLC. And then we'll put a second tag of linear position, and that'll be a real, and the address of it will also be linear position. And that'll be coming from the PLC. And then let's go back to screen one. Let's open up our trend that we already have here and delete one of our lines. And the other one, let's make our read tag the rotary position. And just in case you're wondering why we're adding this, we're getting ready to do some motion control videos with the L27. You don't need to follow those to get through the HMI exercise we're doing today, but that's what this is leading into. And then on that trends properties, let's change our maximum value to 1,023. And that's gonna give us a nice trend. But now let's add a few other things, just so we have some objects to see that we're communicating is let's go to our toolbox and let's add an analog gauge. We'll drag that over here. And similarly to earlier videos, we're gonna change this and make it blend in a lot more. So our background 
fill style, let's make transparent. And then our border style, let's make none. That way it blends in. Then let's double click on that gauge and our minimum angle, let's make zero. And our maximum angle, let's make 360. And then our minimum value, we want it zero. And our maximum value, we want 1,023. That's gonna make a nice circular gauge that we can use in an indicator in an upcoming video. Now, let's add a bar graph. So we'll drag it over. And we'll make it just fit in here. That looks pretty nice. And same thing, we want this to blend in at least a little bit. So let's take that border style to none. And yeah, I think we can live with the rest of it. Okay, and I just realized I forgot to assign tags to both of these. So let's double click our circular gauge and our read tag on it is gonna be rotary position. And then let's bring up properties on our bar gauge. And our read tag on it is going to be linear position. And let's go ahead and download that program. Yeah, I know we need to put something in our compact logics too, but let's go ahead and download that. Now let's make a Studio 5000 program to match that. So we're going to open up Studio 5000 and we're gonna create a new project. Now in our case, we're gonna be using the 1769 L24 ERQBFC1B. Now, if you have our L16 trainer, just select it and make sure you put the number of modules, which is typically zero. And I'm just gonna call this servo. Okay, now I'm gonna create the same two controller tags. We're gonna edit tags. And we're gonna have our rotary position, and that's gonna be a real. And we're gonna have a linear position, and that will be a real. And now I'm gonna download both this HMI program and Connected Components Workbench and this PLC program in Studio 5000. And if you need any help with downloading your program or configuring your drivers, look down in the description. We have lessons on all of that. Okay, they're both downloaded. And you should have no warnings across the top. In fact, let me just unplug the Compact Logics. And if we wait just a minute here, you're gonna see we have a warning. Now your warning would be a little different, but if you have something wrong with your tag configuration, then you're gonna get a warning banner here. So if you did everything right, you should have no warnings. And if you do, then just pay real close attention to that warning. And maybe we should make a video a little bit more about the warnings. But mainly, you'll probably either have a path error or you'll have usually a typo in the tag name. Now let's make sure that we're actually communicating. So I'm going to go to my rotary position. And remember, I made it 0 to 1,023. So roughly 250 should take us 90 degrees. So I'm putting 250 in. And there you go. We're roughly 90 degrees. And roughly 500 will put us a little before the six o'clock position. There you go. And yeah, around 900. Oh, my math is wrong. Yeah, um, yeah, it should have been 750. About 750 should put us to the left. There we go. And also we can see that we're getting a graph of that. So that one works. Now let's look at our linear position. Now that one the scaling with zero to 100. So let me just put 50 in. And there we go, we're getting halfway up. Now I don't like these colors, and yeah, it needs some labeling as to what it is, but that should get you over the hurdle of configuring your Connected Components Workbench program to communicate with the Compact Logix PLC. So I hope this video has been helpful. Don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll put a link to this whole series down in the description. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.